Um, my name is Spencer Page. I'm Dan Taylor. And uh, we're in the heavy. Uh, I think we're trying to kind of work out the lessons that we've learned with the success that we've had and kind of, I guess, build upon that and, and look at the kind of formula, just tweak the formula a little more so it's kind of uh, becomes more successful. I think the, the albums have been done, the first one was done alone and the second one was done with the producer so I suppose mm. you've got the bonus of being able to see what was good about both ways of doing it and then mm. and, and take then, the best from that. Yeah, well, I think we're going to try and do somewhere between the two but with much better songs so I think it's going to be a case of working on them ourselves and take them as far as we can before we kind of get any outside assistance. Well, massive horns, massive beats, massive guitars, massive bass, massive vocals, massive choruses. I think there's still a lot of instruments. I know you, there's lots of stuff that Dan still wants to play around with. Um, no, but we've just um, secured a, a space that we can use sort of whenever we want so that we just rent, so that would give us a bit more time to... But the last album we were in a studio which was quite expensive, so although we could try new stuff, it was always a little bit time-sensitive. Yeah, you get like time a, sensitive. there's that restriction that you've got, got to have it finished by that certain time, which is good, but we could have done with a little more time because it's nice to be able to live with something you've done and then go back to it, you know, I think that's really important. You don't always have the luxury of having everything completely ready when no. you take it to the, to the recording stage, whereas with your own space to rehearse it and there's no... It will probably take us 20 them. years yeah. to do. This is our second coming. <laughs> I, think. I think we're just really good at knowing when it's done. You know, I think we're, you know, we've become developed a, 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 a kind of a skill for knowing when and not when to overcook something. You know, and just it's going to be simple. It's all going to be really simple, but very complicated at the same time. You know, we've just been talking about coming over here in the new year and working with a, a gospel choir, and uh, you know, so that's you know. There's not really any limitations now, it's just becoming a little broader. But I, I don't think we're ever going to kind of... It's always going to be about the songs and it's always going to be about the hooks and about, you know... See within just, the heavy mould, I think. Yeah, it's always going to have that rhythm, you know? I think that's the most important thing. I don't think we're going to go on a kind of a cosmic, like... Spunk truck. Yeah, some sort of rock opera, you know... I don't think we're kind of kind of that out there yet. Not yet. Well, it's just for me. It's, it is pop, isn't it? It's, it's just still about having the choruses and you know just having making big tunes. That's that's all it is for me. It's the last album, we certainly hadn't really thought about how we were going to do it. Although some of the songs had been in the live show, but I don't think it was ever a concern when it came to recording it how to whether we could recreate it. It's better to just give yourself a problem and yeah. deal with it later. I think, which is kind of. Yeah, I has think you should, the apparent. studio should be about using your imagination so that there, sh there shouldn't really be any kind of limits to what you do. You should be able to take it as far as you, you can. To, if it still sounds amazing, then, you know, that's, that's There's not the much priority. you can't do live now either, is there? I mean, you can, no. I mean, obviously you'd rather have it all done with live musicians, but the way things work, you can pretty much recreate stuff, so... Yeah, the Beatles would have been using laptops, you know, if they could have done, they would have done. They, the reason they stopped playing live is because they couldn't recreate what they were mm. recording, so they were around now they would have been using laptops you know you use the technology that's available to you it's the same with acoustic guitar electric guitar you, you know it's just progress isn't it as long as it still sounds good and you put on a show and people are still jumping around like idiots then you know we're all good Difficult when you've been doing it because we've been doing this set that we're doing we've been on the road for quite a while with it I think you kind of miss whatever you're not doing if you've been in the studio for months you want to get out live whereas if you been out live like we have, we're really keen to just start on something new and it just depends where your head's at I suppose really. I love the hour that you play live, it's the 23 hours of the rest of the day which I'm not so fond of and recording and in in working in the studio is definitely where I'm my happiest but live is great but it's only that one hour of that day but you know we get to, obviously we've travelled like you know I, I would never have dreamt that we've got no. to half of the places that we've been to. So we're in a, a really fortunate position, but it just feels like we haven't been home for a year. So. We can go home afterwards as well. Yeah, you know, I can literally be at our studio in 10 minutes and then I'm back. And I'm intending on doing like a nine to five. I'll like, take a little packed lunch and <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a little office Christmas yeah. dinner and stuff. Yeah, that will happen. Just get back to some sort of normal 
working hours, you know. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. There's probably numerous things I feel as if I've learned on a kind of personal level and... It, if you, it's, I suppose it's like, if you had a job that you'd worked at for however long, you you'd still would probably not spend as much time with your colleagues as we have to spend with each other because it's literally... And it's, we're lucky that we do... I mean, I'm sure everyone can get on everyone's nerves, but we, we do generally... We don't argue, we've never had a screaming yeah. fight with each other or anything like that. Yeah, I think you have not, to learn to... We're not on aggro, it's no aggravation really with being in this band. It's mm. a nice balance of, of real proper friends. You learn what you miss as well, I think. Yeah. You learn what it's important to you at home, I think, when you're not around it all the time. But I suppose that's kind of an obvious thing to say. And I, and I guess you're learning on how we need to do things, how things need to be different all the time. You're kind of gaining the experience to know that, you know, we can't really come out here for kind of two, three months at a time without, you know, that's what finishes bands, you know, that's what puts pay to bands, being friends and because it's such a, an amplified existence, doing a live show and traveling all the time together, living in each other's faces and each other's laps, it's just, that's what ends bands. So I think we're gaining that kind of, uh, the experience to realize that, you know, we can't do that, we don't want to do that, you know, we want to come out here you know, maybe a month at most and, you know, not try and kill ourselves doing it. Because as well, the distances are just outrageous, you know, the, so the driving and the logistics are just... So we're always like, you know, looking right next time we come here, we're going to be a bit more cautious and a bit more fight our corner when it comes to routing and stuff like that. Yeah, read know. the small print. When we, you know, once we're up and running, once we get over the hiccups and we realise it's just about us, the four or five of us, it's all good, you know, it's all... Um, it's just unsettling sometimes being out here. It's a long way to, from home and stuff, and it does sometimes for me anyway. It feels like another mm. planet sometimes. But then we watched that um, dig oh, about yeah. the Brian Jones, and seeing those guys just literally all crammed into this tiny little. I mean, they, they could be, we could have it a lot worse. It could be like that. None of us. Yeah. Are. I think we're all, we're all very, you know, professionally minded. It's kind of, we realise that it's, we all want careers out of this, and we want to be in it for, we want to be able to make brilliant music for as long as we can and I think you once you fall into the traps of falling into the cliches of the drink and the drugs and whatever that might be around mm. then you, it's over it really is over because you physically can't kind of maintain that sort of lifestyle or maybe you can in the, I mean, I'm I reading that Keith Richards autobiography at the moment and you know he, he did it but it was a different time now you know and it's different now it's just different and then, not only that but he was making absolutely tons of money yeah <laughs> It's just um, over there. That's very quiet. Tim over there. there. He's a great kisser. Yeah. <laughs> can take his teeth out. Oh, makes it all worthwhile. Um, yeah. <laughs>